Let's just look into that one. It is Allah who created the heavens without pillars. Wrong. Guy doesn't need any pillars. There's no such thing as a sky or heavens. Anyway, so he got tired and he sat down on his throne. He said, okay, now I've established my kingdom. This Game of Thrones. This is a childish book. How can any intelligent person take this seriously? But when we look at it, there is nothing in the Quran that is either scientifically correct or it was not known at the time. So there was nothing revolutionary scientifically in the Quran. That's the language the Quran speaks. It speaks in riddles and it mentions one thing and then it mentions the next thing in the next sentence. Very poorly written book. And there was another mistake in that last verse that he created the heavens and earth in six days. What, what, six days, what, Earth days, Moon days, Mars days, Allah's day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel, Islam is Science. I seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan the cursed. I begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. This video is in response to a video created by Pakistani atheist Haris Sultan. He has objected to 10 verses from Quran related to astronomy. I will try to explain those verses in a very simple and lucid way. For identification purposes, I will call those verses, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, etc. Another one, 35, 13. He causes the night to enter the day and he causes the day to enter the night and has subjected the sun and the moon, each running his course for a specified term that is Allah your Lord, to him belongs sovereignty and those whom you invoke, and then blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's useless. Same thing again. What else? I'll go to verse 6. Chapter 39, verse 13, he merges the night into the day and merges the day into the night and he has subjected the sun and the moon, each running its course for a term appointed. So this is also a repetition of the ayah, chapter 39, verse 5. We already discussed about the repetition of the ayah. 3640, it is not allowable for the sun to reach the moon, nor does the night overtake the day, but each in an orbit is swimming. And there's another mistake in this. Because people at that time, because when you look at the night sky or when you look at the sky, you actually see the sun and moon have the same size. And that's the reason why we get total solar eclipse because sun is 400 times farther from Earth, but moon coincidentally is also 400 times smaller than the sun in this period of history. Again, Allah made a mistake because people of that time, of the desert thought that sun and moon have the same size. And he's talking about it is not permissible for sun to overtake the moon. I mean, what are you talking about? They're totally different worlds in a way. Moon and sun are miles apart. So what is he talking about? So now we'll go to verse 7. Instead of going to Ayat 40, that where you have objected, I'd like to go to Ayat 39. Then I'll come back to Ayat 40. So let us see what this Ayat says. In Quran chapter 39, verse 39. Oh, sorry. Uh, chapter 36, verse 39. And the moon we have measured for it mansions till it returns like the old dried curved dead stock. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about is the faces of moon. Let us see what scientists come up with. Okay, as per NASA, the amount of moon we see changes over the month in called lunar faces. These eight faces are in order. New moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gabious full moon, waning gabious, third quarter, and waning crescent. The cycle repeats once a month, that is every 29.5 days. This means if we have two months, which is 29.5 plus 29.5, give you 59 days. This proves that one of the hadiths mentioned by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also correct. That follows lunar calendar. Okay. Uh, looking at the electronic copy of Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 3, uh, book 31, number 131, narrated Abdullah bin Umar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's apostle said the month or the night can be 29 days. Do not fast till you see the moon and if the sky is overcast, then complete Shaban as 30 days. That means 29 days plus 30 days is equal to 59 days. What a fantastic astronomer Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was. The person who doesn't know how to read and write is giving us how many days will be in a lunar calendar month. An exact astronomical number. If he can't do that, then who is supplying this information to him? Think about it. Okay, now going back to your ayat, uh, which you objected with chapter 36, verse 40. It is not for the sun to overtake the moon, nor does the night outstrips the day. They all floating each in an orbit. Fall akin. In an Arabic word means orbit, the curved path of an celestial object, especially a periodic elliptical revolution. Okay, what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is bringing to our attention is that if sun and moon are in the same orbit, 
and if the speed varies at it, as it does with the sun and moon, they may overtake or collapse. But it is not possible for the sun and the moon to overtake each other because they are floating in different orbits. So it is very clear from above Aya the sun and moons are orbiting in different orbits with different speed in the space as NASA verifies that. Okay. And of his signs are the night and day and the sun and the moon. Now it cannot get more clear than that. Do not prostrate to the sun or the moon to prostrate to Allah who created them. If it should be him that you should worship. Now going to verse 8. Uh, chapter 41 verse 37 and from among his signs are the night and the day and the sun and the moon prostrate not to the sun nor to the moon but prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created them if you really worship him okay it seems the first part is repeated to you from the previous ayahs but if you read the complete ayah carefully in the first part Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing that these are his signs in the next part, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing to those who worship sun and moon and calling them sun god and moon god. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is questioning those non-believers is who created sun and moon. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I am the one who has created them and you worship them. <laughs> in other words, you worship my creation, not me. Instead of worshipping them, you should be prostrating and worshipping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope this clarifies the intent of this ayat. This ayat is different as far as its objectives are concerned. Okay. Let's just look into that one. It is Allah who created the heavens without pillars. Wrong. Guy doesn't need any pillars. There's no such thing as a sky or heavens that you can see. Then he established himself above the throne. So, you know, after a hard day's work of creating the universe, he thought, all right, I worked pretty hard six days for me. And I've created the earth and heavens, even though earth is so much smaller than the rest of the heavens. But he didn't feel it necessary to, to mention. But anyway, so he got tired and he sat down on his throne. He said, okay, now I've established my kingdom. This Game of Thrones and made subject the sun and the moon, each running its course for a specified term. He arranges each matter. He details the signs that you may of the meeting with your Lord be served. Now, this is a childish book. How can any intelligent person take this seriously? Now go to verse 9. Chapter 13, verse 2. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he who raised the heavens without any pillar that you can see. He is the, the throne. He has subjected the sun and the moon for a term appointed. He regulates all of it, explaining the ayahs in detail that you may believe with certainty in meeting with your Lord. So I will segregate this ayah into four segments. Let us see what the first segment says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is he who raised the heavens without any pillars that you can see. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking everyone to look at the heavens. He has created heavens without any support or any pillars. Do any of you see any pillars? Then how, do, how did he support them? What is the criteria behind it? He created heavens and earth without any support. Each object is in space. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subjected them, like his earth, sun, moon, solar system, etc. to spin, revolve, rotate with high speed on a fixed orbit. Are they falling? They are not falling. So my question to you is, can anyone build something like a fit without a support? I myself as a civil structural engineer, I have not seen one. Uh, you can say, uh, we use geostationary satellites. Fantastic. But remember, it needs mechanism, mechanical equipment, fuel, protective shielding, etc., etc. And these items are taken from Earth. The question is, what kind of mechanism, mechanical equipment, fuel, protective shielding did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use to keep them in space? They are not stationary. They are all moving, rotating, revolving in a fixed orbit with great speed. What power is needed to keep them active and running safe? Okay, so go to the second part of the verses. Then he is the throne, really, in a manner that suits his majesty. Let us try to find, find out what his throne is, and let us try, try to find out what Ishtawa means, means rose above. Okay, to know his throne, you need to know what Kursi is. Kursi means a stepping stool used to step on before sitting on the throne. The vastness of his Kursi is explained in chapters 2, verse 255. His Kursi extends over the heavens and the earth, and he feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them. And he is the most high, the most great. His throne is much larger than his Kursi. Just to know the Kursi, we need to know the vastness of the universe. To do that, you need to know the size of the universe. Okay, let us see what scientists have come up with. Okay, go to bbc.com. It quotes, it took centuries, but we know now the size of the universe. Okay, 
the whole universe is at least 250 times as large as the observable universe. The visible or the observable universe is some something like 93 billion light years across, which is in diameter. So, 93 times 250 gives you 23,250 billion light years. Now, here's a twist. Depending on which theory of the shape of the universe you prefer, the whole universe could actually be finite or infinite. Even after so many centuries, scientists are not sure about the size of the universe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kursi is extending over heaven and earth. Now, see the meaning of the rose over. Rose over means to move to a higher position or a place ascended or to appear above the horizon, to attain highest rank, status or reputation, to increase in strength, degree, intensity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing to everyone's attention that I raise the heavens and the earth and all that exists in between them in a space without any pillars. So he does not need any support to raise his kursi or throne. Of course, the rest of the ayats are repetitive, but it is showing his might. Okay. This is another one. It says, Indeed, your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then established himself above the throne. Same thing again. He covers the night with the day, another night chasing it rapidly. And he created the sun and the moon and the stars subjected by his command. His is the creation and his command blessed. So same theme across all these 10 verses you'll see. And there was another mistake in that last verse that he created the heavens and earth in six days. We're, we're, six days, what, Earth days, Moon days, Mars days, Allah's days. Some people say, well, it uses the word ayam, which means a long period of time. Okay, so what long period of time? What are you referring to? I mean, if you're trying to communicate with humans, if you're giving us an information that we don't, that, that's it's not in our scale, then what's the point of giving that information? Let's go to verse 10. Chapter 7, verse 54. Indeed, your Lord is Allah, who has created the heavens and the earth in six days, and then he is the water throne. He brings the night as a cover over the day, seeking it rapidly, and the sun, the moon, the stars subjected to his command. Surely he is a creation and commandment. Blessed be Allah, the Lord of the Alameen. I will segregate this uh, verse in six parts and let us see what this ayah says. Indeed, your Lord is Allah. What Allah SWT is telling everyone that indeed he is your Lord, but I don't take any other ilah. Okay. Now the second part is very, very crucial and very important. He who created the heavens and the earth in six days. To understand the portion of this ayat, we need to understand other ayats first. I mean that the verses first, okay? In chapter 22, verse 47, And verily a day with your Lord is as a thousand years of what you reckon. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, His one day is equal to your thousand years. And in chapter 32, verse 5, He arranges a phase from the heavens to the earth, then it will go up to him in one day. The space thereof is a thousand years of your reckoning. This ayah shows the speed with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arranges his affair based on time frame. It would take thousand years and he does that in one day. Okay. Now, the, in chapter 70 verse 4, the angels and the root, that is the, the Gibrail or Jibrail salam ascends to him in a day. The measure thereof is a 50,000 years. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing to everyone's attention is there is a time difference, there is a time frame, there is a speed of travel, universal years to earth years, etc, etc. As it mentions that six days, that does not mean six earth days. These are different days. Hope everyone understands this logic and the rest of the ayat is repetitive. Okay. Okay. Looking at all the ten ayahs, if you just pay attention as to who is this entity who has created such a vast kingdom, organizing affairs, subjecting this massive universe, rotating, revolving, and making them run in fixed orbits, you will get your answer. He is none other than Allah Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Okay. One of the claims made by Haris Sultan is that there is nothing in the Quran that is either scientifically correct or not known at the time. There is nothing revolutionary in the Quran. I say everything about Quran and everything that is mentioned in Quran is revolutionary. Let me give evidences based on two different subjects. Okay, let's take astronomical evidences related to astronomy. In detail, we already discussed those evidences in the above 10 verses. Okay, let me tell you something. 
After several hundred years of research, recently scientists are finding that the verses mentioned in Quran are absolutely true and correct. Their research exactly matches with what is written in Quran and what Quran is talking about. So now scientists are proving Quran to be true and correct. That's the first evidence. Now the second evidence, I'll give you historical evidence. When Prophet Muhammad received his first revelation, that was around 609 CE, he himself and his wife Bibi Khatija were the only two Muslims. When Prophet Muhammad migrated from Mecca to Medina during the year 622 CE, that is on September 24th, after 13 years or so, see History of Tabari, Volume 6, Translators Forward, page 41, it is stated that at the pilgrimage of 622, over 70 men and one or two women not only accepted Islam, but also undertook to protect Prophet Muhammad so just say there were about 100 followers after 13 years, okay. When Prophet Muhammad conquered Mecca during the year 630 CE, that was on January 11th, around after 21 years, he had around 12,000 who participated in the war. See History of Tabari, Volume 9, Page 8. It is stated that Messenger of God marched with 2,000 Meccans and 10,000 of his companions with whom support God has facilitated the conquest of Mecca. In fact, there will be more followers because that does not include old men who did not participate in the war, women and children, etc. So just for the sake of discussion, just say there were 12,000 followers after 21 years. Okay. Now in the year 2021, after 1,412 years, as per World Population Review, there are 1.9 billion Muslims around the world. Okay. This shows how revolutionary Quran is. And this in itself is a revolution and you say there is nothing revolutionary about Quran if this is not revolution then what is revolution think over it give it a thought okay and at the close my request is all the praise and thanks be to Allah the Lord of the universe